Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Temple of Speed. Welcome to Monza for the, the second last round of the Race Face GT3 Championship Season 17. My name is Stephen Koenig and joining me in the Coventry box after playing a little bit in America out in Sebring uh, is Cameron de Bastos. Cameron, I don't know about you, I am really, really excited here at Monza, a very exciting circuit, but also a very challenging circuit. Second last round of the season. It is a little bit in the afternoon, and we're about to see some grand racing right here at Monza. But everyone's still cautious about turn one, turn two. That hairpin straight after the main straight. Then you go onto the Curva Grande, which is a long right-hander. You keep your foot absolutely in it before you stand on the anchors, heading into the second of the chicanes. Through to the Curve de Lesmo, first and second down the straight. Then you get to the Variante Ascare, which is always a challenging part of the circuit where we tend to see cars out breaking themselves, landing into the dirt, or just touching the dirt on the outside, throwing themselves into the inside wall before you head on to Curva Parabolica, the final. <laughs> where you actually have to go out a little bit wider than you think. I used to actually keep a very tight line through there. Turns out you've got to bring it right to the green on the exit. But uh, how are you feeling with tonight? I guess, as I said, I'm really excited about this. Pro and Pro-Am getting to duke it out. Seventh round, the hmm. second last of this championship. Well, uh, good evening, Stephen. Good, ev good evening, everybody. No, uh, tonight's going to be a beautiful feast for the eyes uh with these cars temple of speed um it's in the name it's the fight for who has the highest top in speed but also i think every driver out there tonight is a bit worried about that first chicane specifically on the race start it is well known within the acc community as a place where a race can be made or broken um and uh, to bring you back to curva Par uh, parabolica yes um i also used to normally take it very very tight but you want to run it up beyond it tuck it in and then run it wide to get as much speed for that straight. But uh, tonight, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be the battle between track limits and who has the best high end speed on these straights. It's going to be an action packed race tonight. It's going to be an incredible one. But we do have our qualifying at the moment, so let's take a look through the points nice and quickly of who's in first, second, and third of our pros, and looking at our ams, our pro ams as well that is joining us out on the circuit. Yes, so the standings for our pro class as uh, we're starting tonight here is uh, Kieran Patterson leading the pro division with 293 points and right on his heels Bernard Barker is in with 271 points. John LaRue slots into third after Daniel Rowe and Bernard King did not race last weekend and uh, with a total of 167 points and then Daniel Rowe in fourth and Brandon Kruger in fifth. Rounding out the top 10 for the Pro Division is Mohaith Musa, Daniel De Villiers, Juan Duplessis, Bego Grobler, and Darren Miller. Switching over to our Pro-Am Division, that's also quite a, a, a battle that's been keeping our attention quite closely. We have Sean Lerero in first with 241 points, followed by his teammate Jason Farmer with 225 points, and Alan Patterson rounding out our top three with 220 points. The fight for second is still close and anybody's race if it goes bad for uh, Sean Lerero there. But running out of top 10 further is Charles Darden, Richard Daniel, Ruan Heineke, Connor Bergstrom, Jakob Grober, Tidus Boerta and Ansi Maiberg. It's anybody's game on this program race tonight, Stephen. It's not a done deal. Uh, it's going to be an incredible one. Really looking forward to it. At the moment, Bernard Barquez is leading out the top of the charts. And then we've got uh, Quando C. Uh, that's Q and Dupsi in, uh, or Quantum Dupsi, I do apologize, in second place. Andres Radio out in third, uh, getting beaten up by Mac van der Merwe as he comes across the line. So Mac van der Merwe currently in third. Uh, fourth, Andres Radio, Jean Leroux, Issam Domingo, Jakob Krobler, Martin Rotenberg, Sanjin Pillay, Werner Skuman, Darren Miller, and Nicholas Kruk, who's actually a newer 
driver coming through and uh, part of the Pandacity team, but I believe that is out somewhere in Europe, that plane, I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> so, yes, uh, um, I believe that might be the Serbian flag, I'm not, uh, Kukic is, uh, yeah, that sounds Serbian, I do apologize, Nicholas, I do know if I have a problem, you're going to give me an earful late in the team chat there, but uh, no, yeah, a new member to the Pandasi team there from, our, from the European side, um, deciding to join in on the South African side here, yeah. so it's definitely going to be showing that uh, not is this only South Africa and um, our Afri the African continent drivers, but also some of the European drivers coming to slug it out. It's a uh, and I can tell you, he does have some pace, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> there, there is a couple of things to worry about, though. 29th position, mm. Kieran Patterson, one of our championship runners. Uh, a little bit further down the order than planned, and having to try and work out what's going to be the most effective time for him. Uh, with seven minutes to go, though, it is going to be a bit of a, a tough one. And at the moment, Bernard Barquez is getting bumped down as Duplessis taking the top of the chart, so Duplessis really leading into pouring up the order, and that it does change up the, the battle a little bit. Andre Serradio, though, first of our pro ams that is looking to take the fight. So good to see we've got a, a great mix of cars, different colors. S7 Domingo sporting a lovely green. I've got to say, lovely colors there for the project paper. Uh, actually, like the green, prefer the green to be honest. <laughs> Uh, yes, no, it's, um, it's, it's it's definitely a nice colour there. Um, I did speak to some of the drivers earlier uh, earlier this week, Stephen, and there is some worries about the cars for tonight. Um, it's well known that, well, not well known perhaps, but the McLaren with the stop and speed, this track just suits it so much you know, if it's down to the ground. And the BMW also a car that we'll definitely be seeing. I mean, from P4 all the way down to P5, it's just BMWs. So I think the Ferraris and the Porsche is gonna oh. is gonna have some problems here, but uh, maybe that lone Lamborghini from uh, Alan Patterson might make a bit of a difference. You don't, you never know. I do think maybe we need a Delara or something. That's my <laughs> personal take on it. Uh, the BMWs, yes, the the once famed legend, unfortunately, BOP coming into effect not only in a set of horse competition using the LFM BOP but also coming into effect with iRacing, the BMW that was at the top of the charts, now just not seemingly having that same power underfoot. A lot more weight chucked into it. It's making it a little bit more difficult to battle run. We're into the final five minutes of the race, uh, the qualifying, but I do want to point out to everyone joining us out in the grandstands, glad to have you guys here. We do have a competition running Thanks to SA Lube, and we cannot stress that enough because we're getting closer and closer to the end of it, and that is the chance to go and win some prize money. So this week, if you hit in the link in the description of this live stream, you go and click on that link, it will then take you to, to SA Lube, you go and register, you have a chance to win 300 Rand this week. But it also throws you in for an entry into your the 2,000 Rand prize pool at the end of the season so bear that in mind you can enter as many times as you would like but more entries means a bigger chance to walk away with 2,000 rand and we're on round seven out of eight champion out of eight rounds next week is the end of all the championships and that's when we'll be giving away that 2,000 rand to a lucky spectator watching it now or within the week of this broadcast and today is the 21st of the third so make sure that you within this week to go and score that little bit of a prize ball. Uh, Hansi Myberg just getting out of the pits. Of, I keep stressing it, I keep saying. Uh, Hansi Myberg, massive thank you from behalf of the broadcasting team here for all the hard work you do to you and Bert's Hugo just to ensure that this all runs smoothly it all works underfoot and uh, we're able to have racing on a Thursday big thank you and Woo he's obviously watching the live stream <laughs> I think he had a little of a blushing moment there Steven it's like oh shucks and then ran wide there um, you, I've you, been watching Kieran that, Patterson's lap here now you need that goofy oh shucks oh shucks there we go that's <laughs> close you're gonna get me <laughs> I mean, wasn't Kieran Patterson's laps there. He, play, he was able to put in one lap together and only placed them ninth. 
I think that Ferrari is busy having a bit of a struggle there. I don't think we're going to have a runaway victory for Kieran Patterson. He might have to fight there. So uh, this is going to be quite entertaining for our pro race races also. Um, <laughs> It's never over until the fat lady sings, hey Steven? It does change up the championship in that way, and you can see Kieran just flashing his lights, trying to get past a big problem, utilizing the straight line speed. Uh, but he is really trying to get closer because he will be starting in the ninth position as it stands. But I just want to point out, take a look at the top 17, all within under a second of one another. That is insanely quick for you as a sim racer. You know this. Sorry, he was getting past. I think it was Daniel Rowe that he was getting past. Um, any case, you know as well as I do to get within under a second of one another in the top 17, that is a seriously, seriously competitive field. And to have your mix of pro and pro am, Andres Radio, though. Leading out our pro amps by a heavy margin because only in 12th position do we have Tianas Puerta and then 14th is Jaco Krobla. I mean, there is a monster, monster pace difference there. Andre Serradio has found a bit of legs in the car that seems to be working here at Monza, but whether that's going to carry him through, whether it's going to work, because as we know, it's getting a little bit darker out there. The brake mark has become a little bit more difficult. The lights start going and taking a bit of effect into you. As we know, as soon as the lights shine brightest, you're either going to put it all together or you're going to fall apart. Yes. And that's unfortunately, where it Unfortunately, that's how it is. I just see that very lone Ferrari of uh, John LaRue there in the top four there. But, uh, no, absolutely, Stephen. Um, I think Andre might have asked Moaith there for a bit of a tip. I do know that Moaith Musa is insanely quick. As you see, Kieran finally getting some pace in that Ferrari and putting it in third place there. But uh, we both know that Moaith Musa in that BMW is a force to be reckoned with. If he can get that hooked up, then he will be gone into the distance. So I think Serodio might have um, sat down with Moaith and just try and figure out how the car will be performing against the other ones and they just seem to have clicked as the two project vapor cars are both within the top 10 both now in ninth and 10th there um and bago breaking up the mclaren party there at the front row saying nope i'm gonna stick this bmw there thank you very much guys i just want to point out andre serradio when he finishes this race will be the first time he has scored points in the championship and what does that affect to Jason Farmer, who is fighting in the top of at least second place? And then you've got Tienas Berta, who's running currently uh, third of our primes. He's lying ninth in the championship. So there's already a bit of a spanner that can be thrown in the works by Serradio, taking away some valuable points that may carry it in to the final round at Red Bull Ring, where it will be the very first time here at race race we will be having a official gt3 race at the new red bull ring on the new brand new dlc that's come out and that has got me both excited and nervous at the same time been there done it with single seaters done it with prototypes on a different sim very challenging a track even in uh, gts it's a very challenging circuit never ever has it been attempted right here at racefest pro mm -hmm. in an official gt3 series to go and have a race there kieran patterson couldn't get it beyond fourth place uh brandon kruger looks like he's gonna give it a break sunjin pile still going andre serradio still going sunjin pile had a problem with his uh, with his drive last time he actually came to a stop Oh, that was due to a technical failure, or as I'm aware, he had a technical problem, um, that's unfortunately, that's where he stopped. Ac actually, Stephen, um, uh, if I remember correctly, it wasn't technical. Um, it's something that he has earned massive respect from myself and a bunch of the people, I believe, also. Um, he is busy recovering from, I believe, a surgery, knee surgery, I'm not completely oh, sure. Yes, yes. You, and you, yes, you, you so, and he just... Yeah, he stuck it out as best as he can, and then unfortunately he just uh, he said, "Well, enough is enough." His body and uh, just said, "Well, that is what it is." I'm, I'm trying to find where the message is, but I said, "Nope." He unfortunately had to park it and 
rode the recover. So glad to see him back. Um, I hope he's recovered and rested well enough for this one. Um, as we all know that uh, Monza is very, very hard on the braking. But uh, speed recovery there for you, Sunjin, and glad to see you back on track. Well, that's that's always the, the best part about it. But there's something I do want to point out. It's a little bit darker than planned. Both you and I <laughs> haven't seen it this dark. Uh, but Oof. this is going to change things up tremendously for our drivers looking to uh, really stand on the gas this evening right here at the Race Force Pro GT3 Championship. Gotta say, I'm not 100% sure. I'm not way too confident in in how it's going to go but out in front Bago Krobler is leading out the charge he's hoping to get the run second to him is a Cuban de Passy followed by Bernard Barquez and Kieran Patterson Mac van der Merwe, Brandon Kruger, Jean Leroux, Nicholas Kellogg in his debut outing up into the top 10 Andre Serradio in ninth, Mahef Musa in 10th Andre Serradio's first ever time this season Mahef Musa in 10th 11th Jason Farmer, Sanjin Pele, Issam Domingo, Daniel the Hitman, De Villiers, Tiernas Buerta, Eric Kustain, Jaco Krobler, Conrad Forskink, Jude Neville, Ruin Heineke, uh, along with Werner Skumann, Martin Rosenbach, Alan Patterson down in 23rd, 24th Conor Bergström, Paul Fenter, Richard van Heerde, Darren Miller, Chris Heineke, Marius Buertma, Hansi Myberg, and Paolo Tellers rounding out our field here tonight. And uh, looks like getting a little bit of a show there with my... Uh, <laughs> A lovely software going hey let me go and try and figure out how this whole stuff works but interesting enough tim the cameraman has got eyes and it is dark 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 out there two mandatory pit stops a long race ahead in these conditions it is 9 p.m don't expect it to lighten up you have to now remember where your brake markers are this is going to be a very interesting run for both hybrid racing cars locking out first and second bernard barkhazen in third with championship rival kieran patterson in fourth place on the outside who will have the slingshot in but kieran is surrounded by the ominous gaming team so that is not going to inspire the confidence around it so let's see how this is going to work we have got Nico Kellerman and we have got Hilton Nixon out in the grandstand saying how's it and they are excited to see the racing one hour and 30 minutes of racing two mandatory pit stops welcome to round seven the second last round and away we go Bago Krobler off to a good start Dupasi a little bit of a slower start than planned has allowed Bernard Barkhazen to look to try make it through wide he second guessed it he goes on the defense Hard breaking into turn one. Kieran's already getting Kieran out of Patterson shape. Breaking. He's oh, Sean and Leroux. there it goes. Oh. Sean Larue was also in that mix. Max von der Merwe getting into that mix. This has just gone and changed up the whole running. Jean Larue, unfortunately, had nowhere to go in that one. Myers Musa now has Daniel, the hitman, De Villiers taking a deep breath and looking to try and get round him. But that has changed up the ball game completely from our top runners. It's it's something else. Even I'm just looking at everything that uh, our stewarding system has reported here, with contact between Kieran and John Larue, as we saw on the stream there. But then also between Larue and Car Twenty, um, and it just continues going on with seven uh, seven uh, double two contact in two nine six. It's it's. It's Monza. Welcome to Monza, ladies and gentlemen, where contact is in first corner and every round the entire track on lap one as we take a look back here. This, this is a helicam, a great run with Mahath and also trying to push up ahead with uh, Andres Radio. But it does look like a bit Bernard Park Ooh. hasn't slowed down. Kieran hit LaRue, came back into Mac van der Merwe. LaRue came back into uh, Mac van der Merwe there and that's where it happened. So LaRue got tipped. And unfortunately, when he came back on, Mac van Merwe got it in the neck. But Bernard Barkhazen slowed up a little bit, being cautious of T1. And then unfortunately created a nasty concertina effect behind him. But has successfully pushed Kieran Patterson down into 29th position, needing a bit of Ooh. work on his car. 
uh, much like many, many others. Bernard Barquezen now on the attack, looks for the inside line on Duplessis, couldn't get it past it there. Duplessis going on the defense to Bago Hubler. Now remember Duplessis and Bago Hubler, hybrid racing, are trying to help one another, but at the same time, they are looking for valuable points for their own championship because there is no love lost between these drivers. Bago Hubler is trying to get a little bit more pace he's down in ninth position and Duplessis is in eighth so they are fighting for championship points and don't expect them to be all too friendly uh Nicholas unfortunately dropping wheel on the dirt and that allowed Andre Serradio and Sunjin Pile to get past so I think Sunjin Pile's work on the knee seems to have found put a bit of lead in the foot as well because he is not hanging around tonight no, Robo, I think uh, Robo knee Pele is laying down the law tonight there. But it seems like the contact for uh, Nicholas there started with um, unfortunately touching Brandon Kruger there, according to the system, so which escalated to it's contact with car 25. Oh no, sorry. There's, there is Nicholas and uh, Andres Radio is there. So Nicholas, uh, late breaking, tried diving for the inside for the avoidance. Yeah, a little bit of contact oh. for the 06 car. Unfortunately, that dropped a little bit back. So, Serradio had nowhere to go for it. Um, but, what a run there. Nicholas now having to fight it out with Sunjin Pile right onto the back. Sunjin did give the try. Uh, back up to our running at the top of the order, though. And Bernard Barquez is getting a phenomenal run out of Parabolica. Now looking to try and get the dive in on Duplessis just can't get it in he's hunting for it but Duplessis definitely quicker into turn one with the McLaren as uh, Sanjay Pillay oh. takes a ginormous look on Nicholas but uh, couldn't make it work that backed him up into De Villiers and John LaRue is also starting to make his way back into the fray of things so Daniel De Villiers needs to keep an eye on the review mirror but also get onto the attack of Sanjay Pillay following each other round Looks to the outside and Sunjin beautifully parking it in the middle of the circuit. Not allowing any overtake to happen there. He says, listen, it's not going to work out. We're going to keep up the pace. A little bit of a flash on the inside for Daniel Davila saying, I'm coming through. But Sunjin wearing sunglasses says, well, I don't, don't care much for your light. So guess what? I'm going to keep going. But that has backed up LaRue and Isam Domingo into the fight. Along with uh, that, looks to be Eric who stayed in the BMW uh, for the hybrid racing into the fray of things. So, Kirstein's going to come back and look to get into involved in this fight. So, very, very interesting times for the start of the race. And all the drivers having to work their way through. Uh, so far, Tiernas Buerta, Ruin Heineke, Martin Rhodes, and Dr. Jason Farmer, Paul Fenter, Kieran Patterson, and Mahai Thursa have done the good starts in this race. Side by side they go, and uh, the Villiers just couldn't get the run on Sunday Pillay. So, phenomenal, phenomenal time there, but Andre Serradio, long since gone, in first place, trying to maximize the points. Second, though, is Alan Patterson. Now, that is a bit of an interesting one, because Jason Farmer is a little bit further back than he initially planned. And it does look like Alan Patterson's trying to get that all buckled in oh, oh bowling oh that's a bmw trying to go for a gap that was not there anymore yeah. that's contact that was between the bingo here's oh. some domingo on such a play that was definitely a, a hefty one i mean let's go back there is here's some domingo trying to go on the roof Past LaRue, I think he might have misjudged his breaking point getting well, zoned in on the car in front. That's LaRue he got zoned in on, he slammed on the anchors and unfortunately, ah, she just goes straight. The BMW did not want to slow down, her anchors were dragging the ship too big for the anchors to efficiently slow it down there, but that has allowed multiple cars to pass through there. And as we were speaking about Adam Patterson this evening, I noticed he hasn't done what he has normally done this entire season, which is box on lap one. Um, he's, he's chosen to go that little bit longer and I think that was due to the earlier contact he's decided to stretch it out a little bit and get going so changing up the tactic a little bit 
that I do see that our marshals are starting to throw out the meatball flag for a couple of cars and that tells me that there's a couple of cars that are not looking the greatest at this point getting notified that they've got some damage to them uh, but what an interesting run to start it off with Bernard Barquez closing up the gap to Duplessis now this is going to be interesting two McLarens both have the advantage in braking. Bago, unfortunately, out in front doesn't have the advantage. As it does it look to be a look on the inside. Oh, Bago, a little bit That's too a slow. Bonk. A double bonk. As we see, the McLaren is back here. Well, the one McLaren backing into the other McLaren. But they're not without a uh, rear diffuser adjustment on the BMW from his teammate McLaren. Um, uh, <laughs> ooh. Yeah, I think it's not quite understanding Jakob Roblin looking on a big inside to Darren Miller. He's actually backed out of it. Chris Heineken tried coming back in. Sanjum Miller trying to do a little bit of recovery work here. Going around the outside and Isim Domingo is going to just keep following as well. So it looks like Isim Domingo is going to try and ride it out with Sanjum Pille. Oh, Heineken trying to move across the nose of Sanjum Pille. Sanjum coming back at him. Isim Domingo also swapping around trying to figure out where on earth is he going to go as he's to are slinging it at one another so everyone trying to find those lines but those breaking markers disappearing into the ether at this point everyone having to try and figure out what's going to work for it but out in front so let's go through the running order because it's been an exciting one bego crawler out in first place followed by q and duplicy bernard barcos and brandon kruger on grace from radio leading first of our pro abs now right up against the back of Brandon Kruger, our Pro-Am driver will be leaning into the fight against our pros. Late breaking into Parabolica. Can he go around the outside? BMW power. Ah, there's BMW yeah, so under steering. Beautiful line. No, Stephen, I think that might be a setup for a beautiful line to get more speed out of Parabolica. But I wonder what is the question? What is wrong with Kruger's car? I mean. He's, that car just bumped down completely a five second gap from the from the top three there and that bmw gaining and gaining and gaining and gonna try and break it but think better of it i wonder if that mclaren if something is wrong um brandon just check your engine mapping at your uh, map 12 there man because uh that mclaren is not behaving that it should uh, no, it's definitely i think maybe sporting a little bit of damage on the car uh, trying to pull it its way back this is going to be interesting because it does look like Andre Serrano has backed out of it a little bit. He's got his eyes on the likes of Nicholas behind him. Now, Nicholas has not run across any of these drivers at all. So this is brand new, fresh ground for him. And to race against drivers that you do not know makes life a little bit more interesting. You know this from your personal take point where you start to familiarize yourself with drivers you're starting to understand you've spent seven rounds battling against them uh, or six rounds up until this time battling against those drivers understanding where they're breaking where they're lifting off where they're accelerating you start getting a, a feel for the grid but when you start arriving on a completely fresh grid something that you do not know and the drivers that you don't know you don't know where to push the limit where is it going to be getting that jump on the rest of the field yes it, it's quite different i just keep on noticing how marshall's waving a meatball flag for this pack of three cars here i wonder if brandon has damage but the question is where did that damage come from because he's in incredibly slow there um Kruger, yeah i think was part of earlier with car number six that was very very early that was within the first five minutes of the race starting um, oh, Marius Boot, uh, very slow, and we spoke about this corner and getting it all out of shape, and this is what happened to him. So inside, maybe... over the curb. Oh, whoa! Curb oh. There was a car! Hello! Did not expect that. that. There was a car in the middle of nowhere that was unfortunately uh, parked off, and I think that was the 145 car. So that's 145. That's Jaku Hober and Darren Miller seems on our system to have contacted. They yeah, are one okay, so this is Jaku Hobler. This is what happened between the two of them that left the McLaren striking in the middle of the circuit. Good Looks up move. on the inside. 
over the curves. Oh, that unsettled him. Break too hard. Oh, oh. Got turned around. Oh my and heavens! That's it just was, changed things. Yeah, that, that was it. That oh. was Sanjin Pillay. Uh, Hesitant to think that Sanjin Pillay in car 88 was also just touching it as well. And Marius Bergman kind of arrived on the scene of the murder and had to try and figure out where to go. Oh boy, this is turning into quite a run. Uh, but a big welcome to all spectators if you just joined us. Welcome to round 7 of the Race Face GT3 Championship here on ACC and I've got to say rather exciting times at the moment with our drivers a start of the race turning into a bit of a challenging one for everyone but now it's all looking to improve as time goes on everyone trying to figure out what's going to be the best move for them uh, but also got to point out there, there has been a bit of news throw this in a little bit because the background news is always fun uh, Pandacity had their first birthday the other day so happy birthday to Pandacity so yes okay. um congratulations <laughs> on you guys and, uh, on yeah, your first um, birthday yeah so uh, well congratulations to Pandacity um, and it also it was the same day as the founder so very congratulations to both both the team the organization and the founder there but um, yeah, Pendacity, well done, uh, well done on what you've achieved thus far, and very, a very happy birthday there. And um, yes, yeah, so I think uh, a orc has achieved quite a lot in a short time that 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 they've existed, Stephen. So um, it's going to be good to see more th more more things happen from that team. There. But, um, yeah, got, congratulations. Uh, even Al <laughs> if I remember, even Alpha One has uh, also getting close to their first birthday. So mm. it's it's interesting to see how the teams have come into the pro thing with how everyone is just evolved over time i mean if you look at the ominous gaming team a team that wasn't initially around in the earliest stages of racing uh, taking on some races and saying look we want to put these guys out there we want to have a bit of fun we want to get into the world of sim racing doing a phenomenal job uh, but then you've also got guys improving their time i'm seeing yellow flags for car 100 though and that Contact is with 465. that's alan patterson who uh looks like he had a bit of a run in with martin rotenbach under braking oh worrying about the yep. oh there we go martin rotenbach over the curbs alan slowed up because he had a very, very slow, what looked to be Jude oh. Neville uh, in the Merc, who backed off just a little bit early, caught them all for God, and Martin Rosenbach dived over the curbs, and that was pretty much all she wrote of it. And Alan Patterson, unfortunately, getting the contact there. PWSR not having the best of days to remember, but Darren Miller and... Uh, it does look like Daniel Hip and Villiers is also just trying to improve their spacing. Bernard Barquesen on the attack. Goes up on the inside of Duplessis. Duplessis is going to try and cut back again on him. Both of them side by side. Ooh. But Duplessis just a bit braver on the brakes here. Oh boy. That was a little bit close in plan. Carl 100 and 44 coming into blows with one another. So Alan Patterson. That's 404. That's John the room, not the best. I think the oh. room might have carried enough speed and tried to send it into Parabolica there. I oh. see Adam moving over. That's yeah. contact, I believe, from the rear. Yeah, yeah um, there we go. Oh, that's a oh, that's just a bad take up. And into the wall. That's extra damage for Paris for Allen there. Steven, what's with Monza and he's throwing championship standings completely upside down here? I mean, these are top three guys in both pro and pro am getting taken out in both right in, in, in matter of the first 10 minutes of the race 20 minutes sorry yeah, martin rosenbach was having a difficult time he actually uh, slowed up quite a bit and it looks like he's just allowing alan to come by so martin rosenbach just saying look championship spot not with me uh you've had a bit of a rough run there i don't want to get into the fights and Nicholas taking a dive on the inside. Ooh. Oh, contact. That with, was unfortunate. That was <laughs> with uh, Brandon Kruger and Andres Radio got the big win on that one. Gets ahead of Nicholas. And it does look like the, the hitman Daniel De Villiers now starting to close down the gap. 
So Nicholas looked for the dive, couldn't get it all hooked in just as yet, uh, but looks to try and go once again on the inside with Andre Serradio. Looks for the cut back, gets the acceleration out of it. McLaren now getting a little bit of grunt underneath it. Will it be enough? Going to understeer out of the corner here. Oh, and it looks like Andre Serradio had to back out of it. Serradio, given not much choice, he does drop a wheel, rear wheel on the dirt and having to just slightly lift off the throttle there just to bring it all back into check. But Nicholas with a big scent, took a deep breath and uh, oh, mamma mia, this is definitely That's... turning into a spicy meatball of a race. Oh, Serradio, don't go too much over the curbs. Oh, never is mind. Nicholas losing it completely. Number 25 car. Let's go. Oh, he's trying to bring it back. Oh, I think yeah, what yeah, happened yeah. there, Stephen, is is a, is a very, with, with McLaren running so low to the ground uh, and the curbs at uh, Ascari being so raised and that little divot on the inside as soon as you exit the first portion right here. Oh, never mind. Mounted too much of that first portion. That just bottomed the car, completely sending him. Completely spinning around there. Um, Couldn't handle the spicy sausage. Uh -huh. Yes, I think uh, <laughs> if he if he wants to keep on spinning around, I'm sorry, we're in Italy, not in the Swiss, uh, not in Switzerland this moment. As you see him being picked off by San Gimpele. Oh, tonight is going to be a very expensive one for the cars teams that have to um, fix these cars and ship them down to Austria for the next Oof. race. Contact again between <laughs> Nicholas and San there. Oh, yeah. I've seen some. Okay, so <laughs> and there's another hit. Sanjin just trying to like just go a little bit on the brakes. He is carving up Nicholas quite a bit there. And Nicholas trying to retaliate, but Sanjin's got his elbows out of note against him. So Nicholas is having a bit of a trial by fire here. Does look to go on the inside. Can he make it all stick? Goes out a little bit wide, runs out wide, and oh Thriller Miller in ever the opportunist. Goes for the inside, backs out of it though, but he is going to try and pressure Sanjin to go out wide. Didn't quite work out there. That has eaten up his drive and allowed Chris Heineken to get back into him. I mean, now Chris Heineken just getting a little bit <laughs> elbows out. Oh boy. This is getting spicy, Steven. I mean, that McLaren has great braking capabilities. I can see that clearly from how many times that the, break, that the McLaren has slowed down, but Sanjin is on a mission, making up for what happened just across the pond there basically in at Imola the previous round so they, this is going to be a fight this is not done and dusted as we just see Eric Bernard Barquez is sitting another fastest snap but uh, Eric is staying popping up here um <laughs> Eric is and Daniel de Villiers had a bit of a pass there uh, Daniel de Villiers now pulling into the pit so just allowing it to continue I don't think Miller's going to do the same at this point he's going to try and keep as much pressure onto the back of Sanjin Pillay like, and just let him eat up those tires on the way through. I mean, this this track is deceptively, deceptively heavy on your tires. Mm. Namely, that front left that takes an awful beating through the high-speed corners. That's I one thing I want, I want to point out. Is what I've experienced, I could be wrong, but uh, I've always found the front left to take the mm. most impact it actually stops the car from just getting that nose tucked in as much as I would like to turn one, two, and two. It just doesn't want to swing around as much. And you rely more on mechanical rotation because these cars are all flattened out. All the aero is as flat as possible to get more speed. You're relying more on mechanical grip over aero grip, unlike what we had in round six. Yes, no, Steve, I mean, if you, t if you take the, the aerial view from Monza, you'll see it's mainly just right-hand corners the whole time, meaning your weight for your car is going to be placed on your left-hand side. So it's going to chow out the, your left front a lot with all the turning that you have to do, meaning that you can be ag as aggressive as you possibly can, but your tires will not be able to last on. As we see contact again between car 100 and car 42, it is not... Uh, it doesn't seem to be Alice Knight tonight, now, Stephen. I hope that he just continues driving, continues fighting. Though. But um, yes, you mentioned the cars being as low as possible, trying to get that under the floor working as much as possible and get that down downforce. 
similar to F1, I believe. I might say on the correction, but uh, just trying to get as much drive from the car as possible. You want to get these mechanical things running around mm. and. Uh, you see Marcel Rotenbach going and visiting it everywhere in Italy except for Monza at this point running out very very wide throwing the car around I think maybe he has a little bit of impact on the drive and he's doing everything he can getting a little bit of aero wash from Alan Person. another good battle Darren Miller and Sonny Nicola still keeping the pressure on one another as they go through but we got to talk about this at the moment because Bago Corbel is leading the pros with uh, Dupacy in second Bernard Marcus in third then we've got our pro apps, Andre Soradio leading out of the pack with Richard Van Heerde and Conor Bergstrom currently in third place. But I do not want to take that into, uh, I'll take that face value at the moment because we do have tennis boards at Daniel De Villiers, Jude Neville, Ruin Heineke, along with uh, Jason Farmer, Kieran Patterson, and so we got Alan Patterson, Martin Rotebuck, John LaRue, uh, Hansi Myberg, and Mahayat Musa. That have done their pit stops. It does look like uh, my Wilson did start from the pits though. Uh, it shows that he's done twice, but he's also changed the cards every single time. So I wonder if he just tried to patch up the car after the contact, but that was with the Mingo though, so it's strange that he would start from the pits. As he had a very high qualifying position in the top ten. Yes, I think maybe it was to patch up the car or he went into the box, wasn't completely line up with the box and that's and didn't it didn't register it didn't mm. register because we have had that would have been too early though that would be within the first 20 minutes of the race I mean, we've no. got a, we're an hour and six minutes we're going flat out these cars are using roughly 3.7 to 4 liters uh, 3.7 3 3.8 liters per lap roughly could be wrong uh, liters of fuel per lap Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I think, I mean, we have seen before where people just randomly stop. It's all within different strategies. Everybody's running a different one. But, um... Just quite a bit to ensure that you can get enough left in the tank towards the end. That's for sure. Yes, and that's absolutely, absolutely true there. So, it's... I don't know. Strategy is a very, it's a very strange thing to actually even. It's very, very strange. Yet. So, I don't know. It's kind of curious. <laughs> One thing that no Italian is being happy about is we got a BMW leading out the pack, followed by three McLarens. Then in fifth place we got a BMW. Sixth we got a BMW. Seventh we've got Mac van der in the McLaren. And only from eighth place do we have Werner Schumann in a Ferrari. Uh, and second of the pro ads is Richard van in the Ferrari. So it does look like the Ferraris this time around. Unfortunately, having a Charles Leclerc and uh, the likes of Carlos Sainz moments just not getting the same run as what they need compared to the British counterparts and the German counterparts that are a little bit up the road from them. Alright, it doesn't seem like they will be they getting the draft that they need there, Stephen, but I'm just quickly looking at the points and how they stand and how it will shake up in terms of our our championship. So I'm pulling up a spreadsheet here and trying to fill in all the information. I think we might be experiencing a change in the championships now. There's only 20 points separating Bernard and Kieran. Kieran's very far back for anyone that's just joined us is wondering what happened to Kieran Patterson. Well, there was an earlier contact where uh, he landed up getting a little bit caught up in a concertina moment. The back swiveling out. Unfortunately, Jean LaRue got that just on the rear the rear and spun out landed up with four or five cars getting caught out in the mix thankfully all cars are still going we're still sitting with a monster grid of 28 vehicles at the moment uh, but yeah, monster drivers still having to try and pick up the pace back from the move though picked up the pace put the hammer down got past here in Kostain and having a good run out there Werner Skumann's going to try and replicate the same run Werner trying to get a little bit more pace underneath him and not having an easy run. I've seen Werner's done a fair amount of practice around Monza and last I've spoken to him he said that this is a track that he does favor out of all the circuits at the moment. Yes, Carl Army is one that everyone goes back to uh, but Werner has said expressly he does enjoy Monza in the way that he can carry the momentum 
through. So he's quite happy and comfortable with it. Here he State favors a more technical circuit versus a high speed circuit. So he enjoys things like Bathurst over the likes of Monza, which fair enough. You will have those drivers, some preferring more technical and some preferring more high speed. Uh, for a slow chap like me, any track that I get to use first and second gear only because third gear is too fast and scares the living daylights out of me. I'm happy with those sort of circuits, but when you get to Monza, it's a little bit too quick for me. Braking becomes a little bit too hairy, and that's when I start lifting and posting a little bit more than I actually should in these GT3 cars. Prototypes are a little bit different, but uh, prototypes and single seats a little bit different. But in the GTs, where you're carrying at least 1.1 to 1.2 and tons of weight into a corner, you've got to try and slow that down from 329 to 330 k's an hour right until you get to about 60, 70 kilometers an hour for the turn one, turn two. Yes, um, I, Monza, a track I love and hate, both, both in his own regards. Hate because I always seem to uh, get myself uh, spun out or whatever, and love because of its nice flowing nature. If you get it right, it's a dream to drive. But um, yeah, I do prefer my preferred prototypes. I prefer I prefer the GT3 a little bit, maybe even more. But I do have a soft spot also for the prototypes. It's still a beautiful car. I still love them very much. That's that's one thing here. Yeah. Just the answer. These these cars are very very heavy and the brake markers on Monza are off into the fences, so you are relying on your headlights. Now, for everyone that's seen the broadcast, you're going, oh, well, that's not so bad. Well, let's go and take a look from inside the, the cockpit of Werner Skumann, who's closing up on first aid. This is what he can see. Okay, you start target fixating on a driver. You can see odd lights all over and those random flashes constantly realize they're having to adapt to these light changes. I think it's actually very, very tricky because going light day, light, you know, going night, dark, night, dark, and dark, and then everything is off to the left hand side. The reflection of the boards does make it tricky to choose whether you're at a 250, 100 meters or so. And they're actually trying to count the boards one, two, three. To make your way through, you stop looking at the numbers, you start counting the numbers, but if you were counting the number of boards out there, but if you're on a lower setting in ACC, and I can tell you this for a fact, those boards actually disappear. On the lowest setting, uh, or second lowest setting on the set across the competition, the boards that are sitting on the fence don't actually exist, and your boards that are sitting on the ground, you'll only get one or two of them. You won't get any more than that, which they also don't really have numbers. So you have to start relying on muscle memory. And Werner Schumann having to rely a lot on muscle memory at this point. While Eric Kerstein, I feel a little bit rough for him because he's just got headlights in his review mirrors left, right, and central. Wherever you look, you've got all these blazing bright headlights that are around that can quite easily knock you off guard when you're having to try and figure it out. You can see how close Werner Skumann's getting to him. This is how close his battle in the top 10. And Eric Kerstein just trying to go that little bit later. You can hear the tires scrubbing off a little bit through Parabolica. And now Werner Skumann, I think, does have the drive to take it into turn one. Eric Kerstein is going to try and hold that inside line as tight as possible. Here comes Werner Skumann. As he goes, oh, that! Unfortunately, it lands with both of them into the wall. Let's go take a look at that. Eric Kerstein, did he? Was Werner Skumann trying to get across and Eric Kerstein misjudged the gap? Or what happened? Let's see, let's go to Tim in the heli. You know, some say that Tim doesn't even need mythic flying wings to be able to fly. Oh, oh yep, no, okay, I, I know what happened this year. It's something that normally happens with all, with, with, with all the We do know that Monza, as you exit 
you, well, the pit lane merges onto the circuit. So at one point it goes from tarmac or for, from tarmac to grass. So we always try to move over. And funny enough, last night was one of the one of the fun races that was as you see. Ooh, that was Ooh. Bago Problo. This is a change up Ooh. for first position. Uh, we will go and figure it out. Yeah. So um, it's. I think Kirstein tried to avoid getting on the grass, even though it was a bit further ahead than he expected, and unfortunately, they tangled, um, and it, it, it just happened. It happened to happen, and uh, it's heartbreaking to see that happen. But uh, hopefully, uh, Skuman can come fighting back there to try and get it sorted. Oof, too many, too much action tonight, Stephen. Too much action. <laughs> but this is the thing: it's so easy to trip up over one another, especially. In the with these conditions now we've been through the rain and we've seen how the rain can change things up now we've seen what the dark can do and uh, you know everything can be put into the mix of it and the drivers are having to run to the mail and just try to figure out what's going to work for them uh, but just a reminder to all the spectators out there we do have a competition for you guys down in the comments and if you would also like to keep an eye on your favorite driver your favorite car your favorite team go and take a look at our pit link the link is in the description click it go to your pit wall live timing to see all the amazing action out there Kieran Patterson getting past Jason Farmer doesn't look like Jason Farmer is going to fight him too much at this point We're going to back him out and Jason Farmer has got his fellow teammates on the back of him but Kieran trying everything he can to go and move his way up through the order after having a bit of a nightmare run on this and as you see it the championship thrown into a little bit of disarray as it stands so everyone having to figure out what's going to be the perfect move what's going to be done because every point counts right now you cannot afford a slip up you cannot afford a mistake you have to stay on the ball I do want to point out I'm not seeing a certain name racing this evening. And that is in our pro app. I'm gonna give you that hint. Who do you think is missing from the group? Okay. Mr. Sean. Our Mr. Sean Lerman. Yes, our championship leader. Is not in for the second last round so at the moment Jason Farmer has every opportunity to usurp Sean Larrero and allow Alan Patterson to also get into that second spot a hmm. did not start maybe the end of the championship coming into the last round because you don't have that flexibility you don't have that moving forward as you see Richard van Hierna who's second of our programs hunting down Sanjin Pillay I've got to ask you and th this is I know what I would do oh man as Dupacy and Krobla are going to war with one another the two of them are not holding back the two teammates now at uh, championship rivals going fighting out Bernard Barkay's back off quite a bit I think he's realized he's not under threat but for this type of thing, this is where I look at where is my competitor that's in my class. I don't look at overall position because now you're that deep into the championship that the last thing you want to do is fight the wrong person and risk having a problem. Yes, it's rather, in terms of this, Stephen, it would rather be better to look where is your closest competitor. You don't want to get involved in a fight with someone who is way down at the bottom of the log while you're at the top fighting for a championship. Rather stick and fight for the points, see where it is and just, instead of chasing a win, try and maximize the points that's available to you. Don't choose your battles wisely. It's something that I haven't followed much in my racing career, but it is definitely something that needs to be followed. Rather fight your own stuff, your own fights, and don't get involved with other, with other unnecessary fights. If it's a different class, back out let the person go by and just stick with what you do uh, stick with your own class don't fight the pros if they are not your fight I do want to point out uh, Cameron you've really grown up you know you've gone from <laughs> thinking about trying to get the chicken flag the whole time to starting to go well 
let's look at where the championship's going to be, where we're going to sit in this. It seems like the, the racing and overseas championships and a different sim uh, has made you had a different outlook. Is it suddenly because an LMP2 car is not as fast as an LDMH in a straight line? No, I think I think what happened, Steven, is just um, realization kicked in. I think for myself, uh, I, I, I myself, my racing was has always been an escape until it's not really been managed. Sometimes it just gets a bit too much, I can say. So um, I think it just reached that point in my life where I say, well, you know what? Just slow down, think of things with a different perspective. It sometimes does happen, and it happens for the best of reasons. So you never know. Um, I was, I think everybody in the racing, in the race that has raced against me and knows me will, will probably be thinking, of, what happened? Am I, cool? am I fine? Um, I am perfectly fine. I just, uh, yeah, just decided to go a bit of a different route in terms of life. <laughs> He's only developed a Twitch when people get close to him. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving away my secrets, even. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's one of those things as Kieran's lost it! <laughs> With his own teammate! Oh, there wasn't con... Was there contact? I, I don't know. I really... Contact between 123 and car 93. There was contact. Let's, let's go to Helicam. Was it after the after the corner though when he lost it in front of De Villiers? There's not a lot of room between the two of them. There. This is where it all went wrong. Into the left hand. He switched places, picked up marbles. Oh no! Most the breaking point. Got distracted. That's a big bonk. <laughs> oh the torture for the PWS R drivers tonight, Steven. This is painful. And it looks like De Villiers also stopped out. Oh. Oh, man. Heart is starting to ache big time as we see some massive, massive changes. I think Daniel De Villiers started thinking three corners back and forgot about this corner where the Porsche just, yep, no way over the oh. in the wall. I think this I think De Villiers was looking back at the Patterson incident and mm. didn't have the now and the Porsche doing the Herbie wink. Uh, something I know all too well and I think Yanaman Price and I have lived through that where any damage to the front of the Porsche you suddenly have the car winking at you the entire time. Nothing's more fun than just driving around and landing up uh, well getting caught out. Nicholas coming out of the pit, so he's done his first of the man, the two mandatory pit stops. All looks it went okay there, but LaRue, um, not quite the track you want to go. That's the, the old Monza where you go straight. Uh, <laughs> they did put the chicane in. They do recommend using it. Uh, but I think that's just being caught out by the lights in the rearview mirror. So drivers starting to feel that impact at the moment, and None more than uh, Kieran Patterson, uh, who has had a rough time. Uh, just taking a look at De Villiers in the pits. I don't see Kieran back in the order. I don't see, uh, Kieran is in the pits. He's just left the pits, I believe, Stephen. He just left the pits. Uh, I'm trying to take a look. I uh, see Alan Patterson. Uh, there is Kieran Patterson. Yeah, so you're right. He just came mm. out. Now he's completed his two of the mandatory pit stops. 35 seconds back from Connor Bergstrom. Uh, Kieran's got a long way to go to be able to catch up to championship rival Bernard Barkhazen. But this does play into Bernard Barkhazen's hand in the race. His champ closest championship rival is now way down the order than planned. That does though some positive and negatives for the championship for Bernard Barclays great means that you can source value points but John LaRue who's also had that rough race is now losing out Daniel Rowe isn't here so he's not racing but Brandon Kruger is he's like fifth in the championship for 143 points and has a chance to get up into third place if he can maintain this pace so the OG KSL factory team driver has got so much to gain just by keeping it positive. But I am seeing a bit of yellow flags coming up for our 404 car and 25 car. 
Oh, contact again. Nicholas going around the outside, and that is LaRue on the inside. Oh, turn one, who's going to be brave? Oh, my heavens, from three wide. Ooh. And oh, spinning and like a ballerina. Here we go. Oh, Stephen. Stephen, and Stephen that, that was that was watching out for Miller, who was exiting the pits. You spoke about that, where mm. it can lead into effect because you bleed into turn one. And unfortunately, when the two are battling it out like that, no one wanting to give. They're looking at the whites in each other's eyes. Unfortunately, someone has to give. And it wasn't the person coming out of the pits. No, it was, unfortunately, Miller, who uh, kept his line. Nicholas, on the outside, did not have any room to go. And unfortunately, he had a car into the back. Uh, close battle is starting form. Is on Bingo doing a fantastic job. He's making up some ground onto Jason Farmer as it stands. Whew. You know, it's nights like these where you get as a commentator, uh, as not a pro or a pro am driver by any means. I think uh, I got stuck. I spoke to Burtis about that. I am currently in my own class. I just want to point out I'm in the the elite class. It's it's a it's a class of one of one call ourselves the elite we so far we so fast we don't even have to be in the race uh <laughs> but it's simply bingo giving J uh, getting past jason farm jason farm actually just saying you know keep up the drive doesn't want to get into too much of a fight there but it's moments like this where you get to look from the outside perspective you get to see these races you get to share the experience with our spectators who have woken up they are currently out in the grandstands at quarter to 10 at night here in monza and really just re you know watching the action reliving all the moments of right now of who's going to get it to the pros who's going to stand on top of titans at this point who's going to have the championship running i've you know, this is what makes it so so exciting to be on the outside of things uh, versus in the car where yes you get drawn into some amazing stuff but you, you get to miss out all the amazing action that's out of track yes it, it, it does make one a bit sad about that Stephen but uh, regarding tonight I'm actually kind of happy I'm not there out there um, I try to get the championships up and running in terms of how, how the points would be of the race but it's too difficult everybody's jumping around now at this point I think, I think the only way we're <laughs> going to keep an eye on where the championships may roughly be is right at, towards the end of the race at this point. Alan Patterson, he's going to keep his foot on the gas, trying to break away from Martin Rosenbach, uh, who's pulled into the pits. But let's go through the running order as it stands, because we've got uh, Dupacy out in front, Vega Rola in second place, Bernard Bonfils in third, fourth place, Brandon Kruger. And first of our primes currently in fifth place. That is Andre Serradio, who is fat battling it out. So then we've got Macken Lerner in sixth place. Richard Van Heerde, second of our pro-ams in seventh place. Chris Hanneke in eighth. Ninth place is Morris Butma. Ooh, he gets it all out of shape there. And that I think is going to change because Tiernes Buerta says thank you very much. So Tiernes Buerta, then Morris Buerta. Uh, thank you, Morris, for going and calling the bluff on that one and saying, listen, we're going to make you think you know what's happening. But guess what? You're not going to. Uh, so he's down into 11th position. Then we have we've got Nissan Domingo, Jason Farmer, Alan Patterson, Jean Leroux, Darren Miller, Eric Estate, Mahath Musa still getting out going. Oh, Mahath Musa very slow into T1 there. What was going on there? <laughs> BM was not a happy camper. It was maybe got a new kitten, and unfortunately, kitten decided to play underneath the right throttle. Possibly. Uh, Might be. <laughs> in 20th position is in the 18th, sorry, 19th is Kieran Patterson. Uh, timing screen adjusting as it stands. Martin Rosenbach behind him. In 20th, Ben Heineke, Werner Skumann, Conor Bergstrom, Daniel, the Hitman de Villiers, uh, Nicholas Craig, uh, is it Nicholas Cuck? <laughs> Uh, I, I, suppose I, I don't want to make it so bad, but I'll, also, I'll always just stick with Kukic. Kukic, okay. I'm Kukic. Kukic. Because in, uh, if it's Serbian or Croatian, the IC normally is an itch. Like Djokovic. 
So I'd rather just say cookage <laughs> for safety reasons. If, um. if, you, if you if you got an itch, you need to see the doctor about that one. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, Sean Kirby is even going and writing in from the grandstand, saying he's looking up at the cloud, seeing if maybe there may be rain at this point. He's shining his torch to see whether it's going to rain or not. But I think we've got clear skies ahead of us uh, for the rest of this race. And I think if you bring up rain at any point, you're going to have Cameron starting to get a bit of a twitch in the PTSD. <laughs> I have a headache from running in the rain in America at this point, Stephen. But uh, we still got to, we still have to spend some time in that rain. But yeah, rain is now my phobia in terms of uh, in the sim and in real world with the uh, storms happening everywhere. <laughs> I can tell you, rain on uh, any circuit is not fun, especially a high speed circuit like this. You've actually experienced this type of conditions where uh, it's gotten dark, it's gotten rain. It becomes more and more challenging around Monza, but now that we're getting into the 42 minute mark, it does lead into something that I, I really get excited about. I love talking about what the drivers are going to feel. I, I really do, as a paramedic, you get to talk about all the fun stuff that comes into it, but the driver fatigue, I feel, mm. gets a lot worse mentally, and the eye strain yes. is hectic <laughs> in the dark because what? Now you have got bright white light that is coming through your monitors and all of us love running high refresh rate monitors so that means those lights, the LEDs and OLEDs are working overtime into your eyes. The darkness around of it, your eyes trying to process what's going on, the brain trying to process what's going on, you're trying to remember where all the brake markers are, you can't visually see it anymore and that just goes and puts mental fatigue and dialed up to level. We always talk about driver fatigue with the different steering wheels that get used, the load cell pedals, the different brakes, uh, all the fix centers, yada yada yada. Well, put it this way, I dare anyone right now is to take your computer or take your phone, turn the brightness to max and set it to day mode. So you have the white color from Google in your eyes and turn and turn the lights off. But I want you to mm. open your phone, close your phone, open your phone, close your phone, open your phone, close your phone. Because that's what the drivers are experiencing at this point. And tell me that you don't get a headache from it. I would love you to prove <laughs> that you don't get a headache from it because yeah. the drivers are having to it's compete with that right now. It's, it's absolutely draining, Stephen. Um, at this point, I've even got to the point as you see our, our Q and DPC going into the pits. Bago actually putting the, pit, uh, the needle there fast uh, earlier and jumping into the pits. They're sitting in fifth right behind uh, Q and or Quan. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, I'm just going to hit it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it with the, Mexican, with, the, with the Mexican pronunciation of saying Juan. But um, <laughs> no, the, the, I've actually started racing if it's at night time. I would normally just. The amazing thing about this, about computers and even phones, is they have something called the night light, meaning that you have this blue, this yellow filter placing placed around your entire screen. It helps a bit with it, but um, yes, the bright, the bright lights that definitely has an effect um, on on uh, the drivers themselves. Uh, if you think that driving in the rain at night with headlights on drains a person, or even just without the uh, without the rain, it tires one out. I mean. I can speak from, from experience and myself with, with a real world one, even if it's just my little Suzuki as well. The, night, the lights on the cars these days are so strong, so powerful and so bright. It, it makes it difficult for a driver to even see what's ahead of them if they're from their head or even from if they're from uh, if a car following them. So it definitely takes a lot out of a driver, but now I have to say, I love it when racing, when, when it's racing in the night, with the lights coming on. Specifically in the Mars, Stephen. I mean, you can't argue with me. When the night time settles in and the lights on those cars fire up, coming down Molson Strait, it's a thing of beauty for the spectators, not for the drivers. <laughs> the the ambiance, as it comes mm. to be, as Richard von Herder has got John LaRue right behind him, pressurizing him. I think he's listening to the weekend in the car with the blinding lights song uh, done by the weekend. <laughs> Uh, as he's got John LaRue all over the side of him. You see, I can throw in a little bit of pop culture. I do listen to uh, music that's above, you know, 2000. Not relevant, though. 
well, the thing is, <laughs> I usually listen to music that's within about 2006 to 2010 as my well, max. But uh, you see, I've got to, I've got to get hip with the youngsters. Yeah, you know, I've, I've hit that age where it's. <laughs> got to, what do you mean you've hit that age? You're not that much older than me. That's precisely why you and I are sitting here in the elite class where we've been told I'm to, not uh, <laughs> to uh, maintain <laughs> ourselves. Um, we'll take a look at this. Andre Serradio leading a uh, second of our programs, fighting out with Jason Farmer, who's our leading runner of our programs. And also in the title contention, Andre Serradio, not in title contention, gonna give him a bit of havoc here. And that mm. is allowing Richard from here to get a little bit closer. So Jason Farmer, I think, back off the top, allowing the likes of Serradio just to get ahead. I know that maybe that's the play. If Serradio wants the position hard enough, go for it. Take it, pull me along, you're not my problem. If I can hold second place, it scores 43 points for my championship, not 50. But it will be enough to move me up through the order and uh, get me into that championship step because Alan Patterson is a lot further down. Sean Larrero is missing in action. That's the type of things that comes into play. Let me get pulled along by you. I'm not going to get into an unnecessary fight. Uh, as we see a bit of a fight going on, Rich Panetta, Chris Heineke, and John LaRue as Tim the cameraman trying to search for the action here. Chris Heineke currently getting the jump and John LaRue getting the jump. Rich Panetta though, backing off the throttle, allowing the guys to go through. He's going to keep into the toe. But also, what's nice about being at the back of a car, it means that your rear view mirrors are clear of headlights, left and right. Now, if you're running on anything that you can see your rear view mirrors, like triple screens, ultra wides, even your FOV, which is a field of view moved back, and you can see those rear view mirrors, those lights constantly left, right, left, right, in the peripheral vision can take the focus out of your race. So I actually prefer to take that step back, let the guys go, pull me along, and start thinking about, okay, saving that little bit of fuel, saving that extra 0.2 liters that's needed for the end. Maybe I can take out a couple of seconds in a pit stop in the running. Instead of taking on board 30 liters, I'm taking 19, which, will, as you know, makes a world of difference, especially here at Monza, considering of how quick the pace is with these cars running at 147 to 148 as an average lap time for the field. Yes, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not so now, well, not so now, I kind of just looked at the leaderboard and tried to figure out he might have another retirement. I did notice Jakob Robler has retired this year. Yeah, um, Jakob Robler is <laughs> out, and I think that was from the, the earlier damage, mm. unfortunately, the team saying, uh, sorry, but this is un unrepairable. Uh, you're going to have to box a car, but that does leave Conor Bergstrom out on the circuit. Uh, and I don't see Nicholas here as well. So I think he's still, he's still running. He's is still, he still running. Okay, so Nicholas. He's C25. Okay, so Nicholas is still running. Connor is not left by himself. At least he's not a panda that's going extinct. Pandas are on the on the bit of a rough end of the scale here. They they need to be looked after. So the last thing you want to be is a last running panda. That's uh, that's not where you want to be but Vernus can still out there so it mm. does help it out there we've, unfortunately we have lost two drivers it seems like we've lost two pro drivers too um I uh, don't oh uh, well three drivers actually so uh, Robert is gone unfortunately decided to uh, stop the car but I struggled to find out I don't think it's... that was that was uh, I don't think it was a retirement out of Wanting to, I think it was an effort, you know, out of necessity there that the, the car was a bit, well, trashed after the loss of the low contact, so he's had to back it out. Uh, Tienes Puerta, Eric Kustain, they're going at each other, two teammates, and both of them are trying to make their way through. Tienes Puerta has completed all of his pit stops, Eric Kustain pulls into the pit, so he's going to back out of it. Uh, do you want to keep an eye out on Jason Farmer, though, because he's quite high up the order. 
Uh, Tiana's Bruits has just gone and meet Fogden. and Issam Domingo, Kieran Patterson has also gone past. Uh, but Alan Patterson is looking to try and get ahead of Jason Farmer. Remember, these two are in the fight for the championship. So Jason Farmer, ahead of Alan Patterson, now close to one another out on circuit. That may also come into effect. Remember, Farmer is running currently in... Sucks. He is currently <laughs> second in the championship. Yes. Alan Patterson's in third. So if he can keep ahead of Alan Patterson, it means he will still run second in the championship going. He uh, will going be taking first. the lead. He will be taking the lead, I think. Mean. Um, if he remains if, where he is. But yes, if, if Alan gets it, other way then around. Then he will stay. Then will be Alan second and Jason will be third. Yes, so, I think. I'm not really sure. But, um, Stephen, you want to hear something interesting about how Sir Rodeo is able to keep it in the, in the top six there? Um, I pulled out my little uh, radar gun at the end of the straight there, and I just quickly measured the speed. Guess the speed that that BMW is clocking at this moment, compared to Bernard Barker. I'm guessing he's using all six gears, so I'm going <laughs> to say roughly about 320... 7 kilometers now versus the McLaren doing about 325 320 I, I think Steven I think you're just spitting out numbers here now no so it's not even that Andres Rodeo and Bernard Barkhausen have the same top end speed at the speed track at a whopping 285 kilometers an hour okay so that's a thousand and that's the fastest BMW on circuit compared to any of the other BMWs. With Kieran Patterson only able to clock a 280, where previously I only saw him clock a 276. So that tells me that he's running lower aero, so he's flattened out the spoiler quite a bit compared to the rest of the cars. So he's actually flattened out the front splitter and the rear spoiler just to one keep it as aerodynamic as possible but with the effect that that can throw him into a problem with losing the car because he hasn't got as much pressure down on the nose mm. so Kieran is currently the second slowest for our on track fair enough he is trying to battle it out through the grid he's into the top 10 uh, as it stands so He's put in the fossil lap time of the 1.69, which is the quickest of all the cars currently around the circuit. He's into the top mm. 10, uh, which is a great recovery on his part. But Tiana Spurter, who has also done his pit stop, so they're going to be fighting for overall position. But I don't think Tiana, well, actually, no. I think Tiana Spurter is going to make life a little bit difficult for Kieran Patterson. Because it does help out Duplessis and Bago Fubler ahead of him. So a bit of talking to the team, saying, look, what is he going to do? But in turn, Darren Miller is just ahead of him. He's needing to do a pit stop. Possibly will open up the door, allow Kieran a bit of a toe to get up through the order. It might be possible, Stephen. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious. I wasn't looking at all of the strategies here. So with our top three still leading to all pit. Um, Looking at our top 10, the driver who spent the least amount of time well, there was from, we still have one stop left, that's right up until 8th. Uh, John Maru only did a splash and dash when he did his first pit stop. No tire change, only spinning up to 21 seconds stationary in the pits. Um, and uh, as we see, Darren Miller with a yellow flag. I wonder what happened there. Oh, lost so that's it. Pit, that's the end of a pit border. It will break marker as well. Mm, that's, that's coming to. That's not the Lesmo. That's approaching the second chicane. So that's fine. This is the top of Lesmo one. This is the. Yeah, this is the top end. And this here, out, marbles, oh, bits of... Try to recover it, and into the gravel we go. And into the 50 meter board. So anyone using that was waiting a very long mm. time. 
rather safe than rejoining into oncoming traffic. Respect for that one. And uh, yeah, I think uh, they almost had it just overcorrected a bit, and unfortunately sent him spinning around there. Um, I don't, I didn't see him tonight so many times in the in the grass, so I think he doesn't want to be called Daniel, oh, sorry, Daniel Darren the Farmer Miller anymore, <laughs> I believe, Steve. Um, he hasn't been playing farming simulator that much, but unfortunately has waited on that corner for 50 seconds. Now, we've oof. got cars that are doing 1 minute 48 around this track. 50 seconds of stationary time. He absolutely kills it, uh, and every thought of you trying to get that jump on it. But here's a bit of a question to you. Kieran Patterson now officially up into 8th position. He's gotten ahead of Tiana's Boato without too much of a problem there. But he has completed all these pit stops. He is now 29.4 seconds behind the likes of Jean Leroux. You've still got... Your top seven still leading from fourth to seventh place needing to do one more pit stop. And our top three still needing to do two. Now your pit stops do take a significant amount of time. Roughly about 36 seconds, uh, 30, 33 to 36 seconds depending on what your strategy is, how much fuel, or whether you're doing some repair work on the car. Bernard Barquez has just pulled into the pit, so is Brandon Kruger, so those two working with one another. Is Van der Merwe going to do the same, or are they going to leave him out? No, he's going to pull it. So all three uh, ominous racing uh, team members, well, OG and KSR and, and uh, the ominous team going and battling it out, all three have pulled into the pit. And that is going to allow Kieran Patterson to get closer and closer. Maybe the worry has started to set in for the team, saying, listen, it's a little bit closer than planned. And we thought we had that breathing room, but we don't. Hybrid Racing, on the other hand, is going to keep their foot on the throttle. They do have a bit of spacing to it. So if Dupacy gets ahead of Mac Van Merve, will likes of Bago Kobler, he does, so he gets up into position, now they're all down onto the last pit stop, but Kieran Patterson's still within there in the shout, unfortunately we can't say the same to Werner Skumai, down in 14th position, still needing to do a pit stop, and a little too late for him, that's going to throw him down, and so is Darren Miller, uh, recovering after all his drives, still needing to do one more stop as well. So we have got a few drivers that are still in a risky situation and others, oh, a bit of Brandon Kruger and Duplessis getting argy bargy of note there. And I think uh, Duplessis just letting his thoughts be known on the little bit of argy bargy moments. But the, the cars naturally want to understeer. You can see the bits of the 50 meter board scattered all over the show. Kenny unfortunately passed away there. Uh, Rip Kenny. Uh, Rip Kenny. Kenny. Kenny is Kenny the Cope. And Kenny. we have Bob the Bollard at the pit engine. Yeah, Bob the Bollard, but Kenny, Kenny's many things. Kenny is always getting wiped <laughs> out. You know, it's like every South Park episode <laughs> out of 2015, because 2015 they changed it. Uh, but Dupacy and Kruger still going door to door. Now Bago Hoopla's coming into play. I wonder if Bago is going to say, listen, give me a shot here. Let's try and get onto the inside of Dupacy and force him around. Or is Dupacy now seeing green and is going on the attack? No, Kobler's pulling into the pit, so he's left Dupacy, who's, I'm, I'm going to point out, is seeing red. There is no question here. He's on the attack. He wants that position. Brandon Kruger going very defensive. And oh, completely misses it. He straight lined it. He did a battle in the Ferrari. I do not know which year. My Formula One knowledge is not that best. Well, um, he I stopped watching him. He said Vettel <laughs> did not wipe out the, the bollards there. Kruger kept his foot absolutely pinned through that. And that's going to be a 
Unfortunately, uh, a warning. He hasn't got a, a drive through as yet. He just that. uses he just uses speed tokens, Stephen. We'd like to call those track cars as speed token. Yeah, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't put it as the most ideal. Uh, as a as a driver, you kind of back off on those ones. But when it's a major major flight like this, you, you're going to keep mm. going at it. But well, yellow flags for car Ooh, 19. One. Well, uh, Again, I hope not. Please don't say it's again just off. No, that's in the run up onto the second chicane again. Oh, this, yeah, this is second chicane. Oh, uh, over the sausage curve. Oh. Spin up. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Night to forget. Especially for the PWS R cars, as we see, uh, as we both saw, Kieran got uh, uh, it was that awful accident at the, begin at the beginning. Um, Alan having runners, Daniel and uh, 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 getting involved with an accident, and now Miller uh, unfortunately also not having the best time of his life. Unfortunately, those uh, those ten rand dates don't do so well. Cooper uh, C now into the pit, so he's backed off a bit of a bit of talking to the back of him, saying, "Listen, it's not worth it to go hunted down." Uh, but very interesting here, Bernard Barkhazen has now lacked the likes of Kieran Patterson. Ooh. So Bernard Barkhazen has scored a lap and Kieran, I think he's busy saying he's not going to fight Bernard Barkhazen. That little bit of a flash there is like in karting or in uh, cars, you, you signal to the driver just go, I'm going to keep on the back of you. And I think that's the, the flashing going on there. It's just trying to talk to him saying, listen, keep going. I'm not mm. in your fight as yet, uh, but I want to keep the pressure on in case you make a mistake, but I want you to pull me closer to everyone. So for Bernard Barquez, and this is <laughs> ideal that you've got a lap on your competition, but at the same time, uh, it's a bit of a rough one. Bego Kobler going onto the back of Duplessis. Now Duplessis, is he going to give a little bit of a toe and then try and let by. I don't think so uh, because Jean Leroux is trying to close up the distance between him and Jean Leroux. He is making up a fair amount of time. Uh, mm. Eric Kerstein. Oh, mm. this is out of that second of the Lesmos, I think. Yep, second chicane. So there's the second chicane. So now heading into Lesmo 1. All looking fine here, but Les Mode 2 is unfortunately where it all goes wrong in a matter of seconds, depending on your line. And oh, completely missed his brake marker. I think he was looking out for that 50 meter board. Mm. Brain went and found out uh, it's not quite there. So, once again, that muscle memory comes into play. You start having to feel the car. Uh, we do have yellow flags with 93 car. That's the hitman. Um, and he's also having a bit of a night to forget as he's got, I think that is, is it the bingo or behind the mm. that might be... That's Musa. That's Musa. That's so that is the number six. Oh, Ooh. big tank slapper, big drift, and that's the end oh, of those shit. tires. Yes. Um, drive, drive through for Nicholas Kukic on, uh, ooh, that was, make that. For Nicholas on his debut here in the South African, in South African League. I think he got a bit upset after that first couple of incidents and uh, tried to draft the absolute rubble of that plane, unfortunately. Went a bit over some of the limits there. Yeah, but he's, oh. de he's got, got his debut drive through penalty here in the South African League, unfortunately. Not one that you want to have, but it, uh, it does happen once in a while. And unfortunately, when you start pushing those limits, you start testing. So poking at the stewards in the ribs, well, they do retaliate. That's what we've learned. Both you and I have learned it is that <laughs> that running if you remember the meme uh, or the episode of Family Guy where Stewie comes in and keeps calling mom the whole time mom, to mommy, Lois. Mommy, mom, Brandon Kruger <laughs> goes out wide. Uh, yeah, pretty much doing that and the stewards unfortunately instead of saying what started throwing the rule book out at him and uh, that was all she wrote mm. was the first time you start seeing a flying 
chalkboardy rays have come at you. But Brandon Kruger having a bit of a problem through Parabolica by the looks of it. Oh, oh there comes loose. Oh, well, that was actually smart for, for him, Stephen. Um, instead of trying to force the car in and holding the brakes, just rather let go of the of the brakes, ease up on the steering angle, and just continue forward. As we see another this, yellow this flag. Is, this oh. is number 93. This unfortunate oh, is Daniel Davilius. The still, car got loose. He is still oh. stuck. Oh. He's in the wall. Oh. He's in Sorry. the wall. And, and that was Van der Schumann behind him there, though. <laughs> but I do want to point out, it looks like the car damage was just too much. And he mm. has now retired the car. The marshals have taken it behind the barrier. And that's all she wrote. That's, that's unfortunate. Um, I was able to figure out who was the other driver that we lost, Stephen, unfortunately. It was Sanjin Pele. Um, hopefully, it's rather his knee just saying, take it easy, I've had enough for tonight. Instead of saying, well, I'm done for now because of incidents that might have happened. But, uh, oh, yes, I'm for. Oh, oh, getting out of shape with Jason Farmer nearly going and getting a BMW badge on the front of that Ferrari. Uh, the Prancing <laughs> Horse now going side by side with German manufacturing. And this is going to be interesting into turn one because we've not seen both of them come off the throttle as yet. Domingo does slightly lift. Just to give a bit of room, Jason Farmer sends a little bit too deep into the corner. Oh! And Spinella. And the block! McLaren! That's, that's that's Nicholas. Good, uh, that is Nicholas just coming and out of the after serving a penalty. And Martin Ooh. Rotenbach getting the jump on it. Alan Patterson comes round. Alan now after Martin Rotenbach dives on the inside of Nicholas. Jason Farmer trying to come back on Nicholas, who is a blue flag at the moment. And Jason Farmer now on the back of Alan Patterson. Remember what we said, ladies and gentlemen. Farmer has to beat Patterson. If Patterson mm. beats Farmer, that is the championship running to the final race with Patterson having a little bit more of a buffer. So ba Patterson needs to get ahead of Martin Rotenbach. He needs to finish ahead of Jason Farmer as it stands. We do have contact though between Eric Kerstein and Werner Skuman oh. that have had a little bit of a running into one another. The number five and the 433 car. But now. in the final stages of the race, this is mm. fatigue coming in. This is drivers starting to bite the bullet at this point. And uh, this is what happened. Eric Kerstein getting a little bit out of shape. Slight little bit big. Yes, well, now remember, Stephen, now these two are old teammates. Van der Schumann was a, uh, was, was a then um, hybrid academy driver, and uh, Eric Kostain also. So uh, now that Van has moved to a different team, now we're getting to see drivers not having to follow team orders there. So <laughs> this is some real hard racing between those two drivers, and uh, I'm here for it. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Well, Martin Rotenbach is a sandwich out. Jason Farmer did look on the inside. And that's over. That's bank watch crash. Out, watch out, watch out, watch out. <laughs> Martin Rotenbach saw the light flash before his eyes. And now here comes this uh, Domingo who says, okay, I'm going to get around this. But I want to go, I want to go back. How did Jason save that? Because he's pointing straight and right behind Alan at this point. I, I, Oh, I don't know. I think he did hit the wall, but Martin Rotenbach, I want to take my hands off to because... Woo, bonk again. Oh, that was Martin Rotenbach into Farmer, but uh, let's, let's just go back a little bit here. Let's go 30 seconds, and you can see Martin Rotenbach just got a little bit of breathing room from that <laughs> fight. Uh, it's a little bit... A little bit, bit what happened with Farmer, though? They did... Was it a hit that unsealed him, or just unfortunately missing the brakes? That's spotted right oh. a little bit of a bump into Jason Farmer. That's that's a that's a car, unfortunately having some issues there. Oh. Farmer now behind Rotenbach. He has massive damage on the car. I'm calling it. He has to put off to this lap. He can't. That car is loose everywhere. This has blown open the entire championship. This means that Alan Patterson will make, might even, knock on wood, no commentator's curse, reclaim the lead of the championship, Stephen. Well, let's take a look at this, because this is a minute, and there's, a, there's one of the contacts that happened that 
light contact, that's a second penal, uh, that's a second warning that would have been issued out to him, and that was trying to let off the brakes and allow the, the class to move around. But oh, I just, I think it was a little bit too close for comfort for, for Martin Rosenbach and Jason Farmer, as you said. Now I've got some monster damage on the car. He does try and fight it out, but he's not giving much room. I don't think he has enough in the bag. I'm trying to see with Tim, if we can go back to that incident where it got all out of shape. This is Jason Farmer. No, this is a different uh, accident. Yeah, this is a... It's Domingo. One. Yeah, this is a Domingo one. Oh, that's where it initially started. And then... Nicholas just just avoiding that one and then from there on it just went from bad to worse yeah, it's, I'm just trying to see where he was switching around positions and I think that was within the braking marker and did it all mm. I think this is it no that's not this is so this is a couple, a couple yeah. more back a couple yeah, more seconds Unfortunately, don't seem to have it on hand, but Jason Farmer just eating the positions at the moment and unfortunately going further and further back. So, unfortunately, we're not able to pull up that replay as yet. Mac van der Merwe giving a bit of a flash to Nicholas saying, Hey, buddy, I'm going to come through if you don't mind. I've got Andres Radio who's making my life very, very difficult. Remember, Andres Radio first to the Pro Ams and is currently running in third place. Seradio is way way up the fight Ooh. than what he's planned and he's having a great However, run there but we do have, do have to pit and yellow flags and pit still so uh a massive shake up as we see Vernus kuman in the yeah Vernus kuman in the pandesti ferrari behind and eric Stein there eric hey, that's something moves out and the braking trying to defend his line kirstein getting a little bit out of shape oh, okay so Kirstein got out of shape, and then here comes the rest of the hybrid racing class, the Verda who are mm. you know, in their own battle. Jason Farmer having a coming together with Richard Vignetta. Farmer's not having this, I think it is all going wrong with a huge Yellow amount flag for it again. Oh. So this is with Richard Vignetta, this is the first of when it started going wrong. Richard that Vignetta car has break. damage yeah, that car has way too much damage rather box and get that fixed Jason I would rather recommend that and into the wall. the wall that's gone that is race over for Jason Farmer with Alan Patterson going to take over the lead he tapped it in the wall he's got no that whole bond is left Stephen. that's front right suspension damage that um, car will not turn look at that steering wheel and he says that's enough I'm retiring this car Oh, and yep, that, that's our next retiree. That I can't hit it. it. I'm heartbroken for the man. That's a championship. Mm. That is a championship. The championship for the LTR team slipping away with, unfortunately, with Sean Loreiro not being able, not arriving tonight. It might be the car getting stuck in a shipping container or something. Or just not firing up when it should, but uh, I see Eric Stein again in the pits. But this has completely, completely thrown away the championship, basically for them, unless they get some serious points in the and, next race. And it's game Alan, over. And Alan doesn't finish. If and Alan, Alan oh, as we see Mac trying to sell a dummy there to Andre. Oh my word! Okay. I, I <laughs> um, love to see that. Well done. Uh, uh, Andre didn't fall for it though, but that was uh, uh, like, uh, I'm going in, nope, I'm not. Um, and that was a almost major look there. Oh my word. <laughs> but what it means at Red Bull Ring is if Alan starts the race and finishes, he takes the championship. Yes. He takes it. LTR would have lost and fallen into second and, second and third place maybe a little bit further down that because oh man oh man just just thinking about it is it's I, think, I think very few 
can say they they've been there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Very few can say they have been in those moments where you're fighting it that hard in the championship and it gets stripped from you right at the last. I mean, we go back at the, the heart and throat moments with Lewis Hamilton and the likes of uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Max Verstappen, <laughs> Michael Schumacher mm. also having the run with Hockenberg. Uh, was it Hockenberg? No, no, it wasn't. Um, I forgot his name. Uh, <laughs> Wait, even, what's, what's his name again? <laughs> this is, uh, then you had like Rosberg. Senate. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't with Rosberg. Uh, but then you had the likes of Senna and Prost, where it all mm. just stripped away at the loss. And I think that's what we we're starting to see here. Ooh, test. I'm selling the dummy there. Oh, not really. Just I'm just saying. Nope, I'm going to pet. I think do you're thinking of Senna, or not Senna, with Schumacher and Damon Hill. Yes, that was one. Yes. Oh, drive through. Oh, that's speeding in the pit lane. No, that's not. Sorry. No, that is that track limits. Is track limits. That on Ascari, a well-known place where you can get track limits there. But um, yeah, I don't know, Steve. On, on, on the pit wall, giving us a little bit of saying. Unfortunately, that is mm. is pretty much it but, for the championship mathematically, unless. And I, I, I know I. Mm -hmm. We've got to throw out more scenarios here. We're in the final six minutes of the race. It's been it's been crazy. But unless Alan doesn't start the next round, which I, think, I don't think might happen, which is but a probability of anything can happen. Uh, <laughs> I think Alan would literally boot Kieran off the rig <laughs> to ensure they that. move. He, I think they would. I think I, he would actually take I, the rig and strap it to a freaking power station somewhere directly, Steven. <laughs> It's all the lines of Kieran. Remember all the years I changed your nappies. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, yes. that, that dad moment will come out. That's for sure. Listen here, son. Now I'm pulling the dad card. Get out of it. <laughs> oh my. That would actually be something to witness. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, oh. You know, but oh man, it's 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 a gut wrenching moment. Mm. And, and Jason. Heart goes out to you, mate. Really, heart goes out to you on that one. Uh, but this, this is the difficult. Yeah, you know, this is what it comes in when you got pro and amps all together. That anything mm. can happen. It's multi-class racing. Uh, you can have those moments that just throw a spanner in the works. That really just change up the entire ball game of of what you're doing. And you know, it's. All I can it's, say is it's multi class. <laughs> it might be over for this race, mm. but you still have a chance to get them in the top three or second and third by finishing next race. So put your yes. eyes on two Red Bull Ring, new circuit, new grounds, new setups, people not having a. a opportunity there to get as much practice as they would like and I can sure it's a brand time. new circuit most people will be driving on GT2s instead of GT3s on that track uh, I know I took a GT4 out on the circuit and completely missed every break <laughs> but you know it's got it, it, it might not way. it might not be the season but there's still three more seasons in 2024 to go for it. That's the one thing you've just got to have that mental shift to it. I don't know how to. You can't it's... sugarcoat it. it it's one of those things. Alan Patterson and Martin Rosenberg going at one another. This is for third. Now Alan's trying to maximize. Ooh, Brandon Kruger with a yellow flag. What happened there? So let's go and take a look. That's Richard Van Hede ahead of him. And I think Brandon Kruger just getting it all out of shape. Looking okay there. Might have just gone off track there. I prefer off track than having him in the uh, wall there, as you see. Here. Root goes off circuit. Very wide run there. He's just checking out the grand sense once again. Okay, again. Oh, to too much. Ooh, Tokyo Drift. Someone played the man the theme song. He just drifted in that gravel. 
Well done, kept it well together, but oh, that was hard. That was a hard and throat moment there, Stephen. I'm not gonna lie. What I'm noticing is front suspension is very soft. To do that, he's mm. got a he's got a high anti roll bar, but soft suspension. So the whole car is stiff on, in terms of body roll, but the nose has all the weight showing forward, pivoting on the nose. Late braking like that's not working. Right. So he's gonna have to either stiffen the suspension or move the brake bias to the rear a lot more to just get everything a little bit sorted out because as you can see it just has that seesaw effect coming into play but with that being said Bernard Barkhazen has everything on the cards to finish up in first place uh, Juan Dupasi currently would have second Vega Kubler would have third Macklin Merville would have fourth uh, he's got pressure from Andres Radio though and then you've got Kerrick Patterson a great recovery after a nightmare of a start is lying in seventh position will be moving up into sixth as soon as Brandon Kruger gets on top of this uh, I would think I don't think so I think he's no, still he's a slash and dash he's yeah. sixth in class yeah he's sixth in class but he's hmm. 26 seconds away from Andre Serrano so that pretty much does it but Matt for the Merva who is uh, not going to be too chuffed at the moment getting caught by the Porsche and Serrano is hunting him down Serrano is wanting to uh, sick and tired of going and looking at the radio the video star he's going to be about the radio star coming back video didn't kill the radio star on this one dives up on the inside couldn't get it all sorted out but Mac van der Merwe really trying to show off what he can could we say this is a bit of a Intel versus Apple situation Mac versus radio Intel, running on Intel versus Apple yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. You've got a, you've got no. a Mac, you've got a Mac, and you've got an Intel. Um. Oh, if you mean if you're talking about phones, Apple is the phone, Mac is the computer. <laughs> now you just broke my, you just broke my IT brain there, but Stephen. Yeah, I mean, Mac versus well, Mac versus uh, Windows is more uh, likely, but uh, I don't know. Chris Heineck uh, running into a bit of a problem, so he loses out. Uh, Brandon Kruger rejoining after his pit stop going in fourth place will have this little duo closing up on him on a race of knots. Bernard Marquez and uh, probably we'll see a Vega Corbler currently first and third, but that does be hybrid racing second and third lockout as it stands, which does help in the team championship, mm. might I add, because you want to have that sort of lockout. Uh, unfortunately, PWSL so just losing that little bit of, bit of grip on him, so does the OG and the PSR team. Now, uh, losing that little bit of grip. Andre Serradio looking to add a bit of salt into the wounds here with our pros. And Andre Serradio been very, very impressive, but he can't forget Tim Sports is in 8th place. Adam Patterson uh, is in 10th, and that is 2nd and 3rd. They are running with one another with Martin Rotenbach who uh, is right on the back of Alan Patterson towards the end of this race. So there is still some open cards here. 25 seconds to go in the race. And we've just got confirmation from Jim saying that our leader, Bernard Barkhazen, is on the final lap. So we'll follow this little battle going on because this is for the top four in a race. Uh, this is going to be a monster of a run. So, if Martin Rotenbach can get ahead of Alan Patterson, it can influence the championship points into the final round. If Martin Rotenbach can't, Alan stands in with a huge, huge top chance at the moment. So, luxury time of racing is putting all the faith into the little Thomas the Tank Engine Speed Demons car over here, this little blue Porsche to uh, get ahead of a Lamborghini uh, hooking a little bit too much curve he is powering on Allen trying to go on the defense but coming up towards uh, out of Lesmo 2 into Ascari mm. and uh, this is Bernard Barquez and beating out the charge so great run for him and what a, a workout for him a little bit of early breaking into turn one just to avoid the Constantino effect unfortunately comes into play Heineke going and losing out a bit of drive and that has dropped him behind Richard van Heerde here comes Jean Leroux as well to just put a bit of salt into the wound but uh, coming up to a line Bernard Barquezen will be taking 
the chequered flag for the second last round of the race face top pro gt3 championship right here at monza well done to bernard barkazen and scoring valuable points for his championship then second place is going to be to corn du Pessy, and bago krubler will be finishing out third Brandon Kruger looks to be in fourth place. Mac van der Merwe has still got Andres Radio on him. But the championship lying in the hands of our Pro-Am, Alan Patterson and Martin Rotenbach looking to take it down to the wire. But it, Martin Rotenbach lost out the drive. And I think Alan had, may have done enough to get ahead. Going to be late on the braking here. But I think Martin Rotenbach has slacked off the throttle a little bit just to try and save the tires save a bit of fuel and Alan has opened up that gap 1.8 seconds but uh, running through the order Bernard Barquez, Akira Dipsy, Bago from the, uh, Brandon Kruger along with Mac Van Amerve, Andre Serradio taking first place on the programs, Kieran Patterson will be taking seventh position uh, we've got Tedis Buerta second on our programs third at the moment as it stands two second gap I can say is going to be Taking that third place. Brilliant what? drive, even after all the accidents that happened for the PWSR team. Very, very happy. For I think they can be very happy with that one. Into the top 10, both uh, Kieran and Helen Martin Rotenbach, great fighting on his part, taking 11th place, Chris Hanukkah in 12th, uh, along with Richard Van Heerde in 13th, John the Rue, Ruin Hanukkah, Mahai Thulissa, Werner Skumont, Marius Boerter, Conor Bergstrom. Uh, Paolo Tellers, Darren Miller, Nicholas, uh, Nicholas on the first run, and uh, Hansi Myberg, followed by Eric Kostain, running mm. out our field. Oh boy, but uh, <laughs> what a race. Some to forget, but I have to say a lot of interesting times. A, a great bit of running there. Unfortunately, some proper heart-wrenching moments from start to finish. Cameron, uh, you and I could not have expected i mean we've been through some no. heart-wrenching moments in the last little while but nothing like the, what we had tonight no absolutely not steven and uh as as we're running i was continuously right, uh, moving them uh, the positions around for the drivers on on my little spreadsheet in terms of the pro m and pro classes and this going into the final round the battle for this championship in the pro as even as gotten way more spicy i'm not gonna lie um i'm looking here with the the gap for uh, between kieran patterson and bernard barker is and from something that was almost 20 points from 14 points it has closed down to only 10 points i think i have a correct here nope that's just on the wrong page for the pro the pro I'm standing sorry for that one no the gap between the pro and uh, for the pro drivers from two from pretty much almost 22 points has gone to only 10 points with Kieran in the lead with the 10 point lead and Bernard right on the tail there. And Alan Patterson just etched out a lead over Sean Lerero of about 17 points. Um, and about, about 33 points to Jason Farmer. The PWSR drivers are in the lead at this point, but will it stay the same after next week's race? Well, that's it, the final round coming into it. And Kyle, uh, Red Bull Ring, a new circuit, you know, just going to challenge things up. I, I do want to give a bit of a shout out, though. Uh, one person that's one of the unfortunate retirements of the race, but came over to the stream, watched it from the pit wall. Uh, shout out to Jason Farmer. Keep an eye on it. Really appreciate the kind comments as well. Uh, and sorry for the incidents that that unfortunately has changed things up but still well done to you on a phenomenal drive do you want to start bringing in a couple of our interviews tonight because we do have a few things uh jason palmer say going to give everything he can at the red bull ring good i want to see it all laid out there on the track i want to see all the 11s left out on the circuit and you feeling absolutely exhausted by the end of it you gotta go and put in the fight but let's bring in the interviews because we've got quite a few here mm. um starting off with let's bring in 
Let's bring in Tinas, our pro M, our pro M second place. Yeah, let's, we yeah. haven't had an opportunity to speak to with him at all during this entire season, so I think it will uh, be I was, a, nice. I, was a bit, I was a bit taken away that he actually came because this will be the <laughs> second ever interview I had with Tinas Buerta. Mm. Tienes Puerta, welcome to the commentary box. Uh, I know you don't get to come here often because you generally get lost at the staircase because every time I wanted <laughs> to interview you, you've always just missed out. But uh, second of our programs, how are you feeling with that one? Great running on your side. Some hard uh, moments though. How does it feel? No, it was, uh, I'm tired, but <laughs> I've been practicing the whole, I've been practicing the whole week, um, but it feels slacker. Had a good race, didn't have any incidents, no knocks, no damage, perfect pits each and every time. And uh, no, it was a flip and lack of race. I loved it. How was it in the dark at Monza? Because we talked about how difficult of a race this is because judging your brake markers, judging where guys are, you have lights flashing all over in your mirrors. How was it out there with all these cars and trying to keep a consistent pace? Um, it actually comes down to muscle memory, I think. Um, and you just try and hit your, you actually try and hit the brake mark each and every time. Don't rely on a board or something next to the, uh, next to the track because that gets taken out. Um, get more of a solid brake point and try and hit it each and every time. Oh. Uh, a proper running out there and congratulations on such a you know what a what a way to start your your climb up onto it but also the team being a uh, very well done hybrid racing has done a nice climb up through it all how's the morale going into the final round as a team no we're strong eh? um we we all support each other um we sit together i mean we were in in the same chat the whole time and and you just you when you're on a different um a different part of the track you just give uh the information as it comes through and you just keep on pushing eh? definitely gonna be a very interesting one there uh cameron anything you want to say to tian's Buerta? you two don't get to talk much <laughs> I think this is oh. <laughs> very few times that you actually get voice to voice. You always mm. uh, generally just a message to one another. Mm. Now we get Cameron <laughs> de Bastos and Tiernas Buerta, uh, two very vocal towards one another. Now finally get your voice. Let's, <laughs> let's see how it's going to work out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Uh, me and Tiernas are actually quite, uh, we get along quite well. Um, a very a, a, a very good friend of the McLaren, you can say. No, um, Tiernas just want to say absolutely well done on that race, a great race there. Um, was there any communication in terms of the team saying, well, can you just try and back up this driver if they are behind you? Um, if, if, same lap, but just trying to back them up in terms of in terms of helping your teammates get a good uh, good run in terms of the points. No, not really. I, um, I mean, if um, I believe as, as a, 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 a slower driver that if a faster driver comes up behind me, um, I do get out the way. You know, it's it's uh, mm. even if it's the pro driver um, lapping at a, a second faster than I do, um, I am going to give you that place. Probably not going to give you it right away um, mm. because I also don't want to lose time to the guy behind him. Mm. Um, but uh, no, no communication to say, listen, but... You need to uh, you need to back up that guy because uh, he's going to come past us now. So nothing like that. Eh? More, That's more, good to hear. More in the lines of "Don't hold me up because I'm coming through like a, a freight train at this point." Yes, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. That's it. But, but um, you being on the pro am side of the McLaren for well with the McLaren car, give us some insight on how did the, how did the car respond? Did it was it a comfortable car to drive immediately, or was there some challenges that you faced regarding that car? I was running a standard setup, uh, just got the pressures right. Um, I mean, I was on a two wing and a two uh, uh, a two traction control, so the car was extremely stable. Um, myself and Q, um, we've been working on the McLaren the whole week, and I mean, he was running in uh, um, full quality trim. He was doing a 45.6, if I can't, if I'm not mistaken, 45.6 or 45.8. 
which is extremely fast. Um, and I, it was in the high 47s on, on Quali. So it was a very fast, very lack of car to drive. Oh, thank no, you. That's, that's I mean, good that's, <laughs> it, it's really good to hear a you know, the bit of chat there, a bit of insight into it. And well done once again on the run. And looking forward to seeing what you can do at Red Bull Ring. Uh, Tiana Spur to everybody from Hybrid Racing. Uh, anything you would like to say to all our spectators out before we let you go to enjoy the festivities? Hope to see you guys at the Red Bull Ring and um, Hybrid Racing for the win. Yeah. Have a lack of one. There we go. I like that little bit of spice mm -hmm. added in. Don't worry. we uh, Cameron and I are going to be there. we got the economy flights. Uh, you know, but yeah, the economy? Yeah, well, at first I was I, sitting in the... I, in the footwell, but now, now it's economy. I only fly business, man. I only fly. I'm kidding. Economy is more than fine enough for me. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tianis Buerta. Okay. Cheers, so guys. Let's bring in a Bago Krobler uh, into the chat. Bago Krobler, welcome to the commentary box. It's uh, nice to have you once again. This time, having a fight through and throughout with your fellow teammate and championship rival. Not an easy time there because there wasn't, uh, I don't think there was any uh, working with one another. I think there was a little bit of trying to one up each other through the corners. How are you feeling after that one, bud? Uh, yeah, thanks. You mean good, feeling good. Um, to be honest, I wasn't expecting anything really result wise tonight. Um, McLaren's or fast, yeah, so um. <clears throat> Yeah, I was uh I was I was actually expecting to have a bit of a hard time so to get pole position first of all was a, a big big surprise because I've seen the lap times that um Kieran was able to do during the week and they were quite frankly scary. So yeah, it seems like just nobody really hooked up a lap and um from there sort of the race I kind of knew it would be not, not really a case of trying to win the race but just trying to not fall back too much because uh, I knew just on pure lap time probably giving away about two tenths to Kewen. So, um, but yeah, but when he actually got to me, we didn't, we weren't actually fighting. So we were trying to work together because um, obviously we didn't know strategy wise what um, Barquez and Kruger would be doing. So, um, yeah, when whenever the lead car made a mistake, the, we sort of let the following car go through but um yeah we certainly weren't gonna actually try and overtake each other our goal was sort of to just try and stay in uh in podium contention with both cars and also now with the team championship having a lockout of second and third right at the the top of things that does help a team championship What's your thoughts heading into the final round? Red Bull Ring, a completely new circuit to Race Face Pro GT3 Championship. And uh, now having just a new spanner in the works thrown in, the championship itself uh, starting to op open up with you and Kieran getting a little bit closer to the top end of the order. Plus also a little bit of bragging rights of who beats who. Is there a, a little bit of nerves kicking in for next week? Um, no, not really at this stage. I think Kieran's missing the last race. So also no point in fighting each other too hard tonight, really. <laughs> um, but, you know, he, he put in a lot of work. And uh, tonight was his, um, how can I say? His, Moment um, to shine like headlights. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he's he's, he's at really good pace throughout the season and he's always had some bad luck so um it was nice to see him finally get the result that he deserves as for the team's championship yeah well uh, both both of us obviously hybrid cars but we're not uh, scoring points for the same team so my teammate is daniel who unfortunately has now missed two races in a row so we are pretty much out of contention for team's champ i think if we can hang on to third next week in the team's champ then then we'll be happy Okay, so this is a this is a call out to Daniel Rowe, buddy. Uh, you got you got to pull the cards here. You got to come back. You got to get racing. You you can't let Bay go down. Otherwise, well, let's just say the next practice session, if you miss your break marker, 
I don't think Bando yeah. will be uh, too forgiving on that one. Uh, yeah, uh, but also I think Daniel. I, I'm leading Daniel in the in the drivers' champ now, so you won't like that. So I'm sure he'll be back. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So a bit of a inner team rivalry <laughs> coming into play as well. Fair, fair enough. Can can fully support that one. Uh, Cameron, anything you would like to say to uh, Jan Bega Krobler, who uh, came third in tonight's race for round seven of the Race Face GT? Three championship mm -hmm. season seventeen. Well, I think I think you actually covered most of it. I think the one thing that we can all be very happy about is seeing that BMW at at the front there leading the way. It's a uh, you might not like it being with a beaver teeth, but it's definitely a, a beautiful change of pace compared to the Ferrari and the McLaren that we've seen dominate the past couple of races. So uh, well done, Bago, and um, yeah, see you at Red Bull Ring and all the best. Yeah, thanks, guys. We'll see you there, and hopefully we can uh, have a chat again after the race. I'm looking forward to it. Thankfully, it was dark enough that we could avoid the beaver teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bago Krobler. Uh, let's bring in Mr. Duplessis uh, for the final conversation for tonight. And this is Mr. Duplessis. Welcome. Taking second in the race for round seven of the Race Fest Opera GT3 Championship. Some heart-in-mouth moments for you with uh, getting past a couple of the back markers and also challenging up at the front. But a lockout 1-2 at the start and now getting a 2-3 at the end. I'm sure you're smiling getting one up over your fellow hybrid racing teammates. Yeah, no, I'm definitely happy about the result for this race. Uh, unfortunately, it lost out on P1 at the end through strategy. I don't even think uh, a no, no tire pit stop would actually work out but uh Barkay's in the the opposite so congrats to him but yeah I'm, I, I just entering this race I was uh, looking for a podium and a p1 would have been just a cherry on the cake basically and yeah, I would be happy taking the podium away well I've, I've got to ask I mean we've seen you having rough luck over the over the years that you've been racing over the quite some time do you think that you've finally broken the camel's back with the last couple of races getting better and better you think the the streak is now behind you and what we going to see further on now uh, going into season 18 is we're going to see duplicy fighting for first second and third of our pro championship uh yeah that would be the the goal actually because uh, with this season i kind of just jumped into the mclaren without or uh, like practice really and from valencia where i first started i just had no knowledge of the mclaren because i kind of wanted to try a different car than the ferrari so i jumped into the mclaren and learned its uh mechanics i would imagine and yeah just getting the overall feeling of the car but for next season i'm gonna stick with the car and see if I can propel myself forward learning the car as much as possible for the next season to get the most out of it. Well, heading into the final round next week, round eight at uh, the Red Bull Ring, what's your feeling into that? A new circuit for the car, new circuit for the championship and a new circuit for you. What's your what's your thoughts going into it, especially with those blind right handers at the top of the hills? Um, it's gonna be fun to watch. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not gonna participate there because I don't have the DLC and the it's a bit grim here at the moment. So I'm gonna and unfortunately I have to pull myself out of the Red Bull ring, even though I really want to race there, the new track and everything. But unfortunately, I'm gonna miss out on the next week race oh I, well yeah fair fair enough and a bit of heartbreaking to hear that but still i mean throughout the season you have been to and fro you've been on both sides of the coin and i i take my my hat off to you bud what a phenomenal drive your side you just yeah, keep keep it up keep up the amazing stuff and tonight you showed what you could do and really put a, a you know, stamp out on everyone and say, hey, look, I'm here, I'm in action, and I'm ready to go racing. Uh, Cameron, anything from your side? 
Um, no, not very much, but I'm just glad to hear that, that another driver got <laughs> decided to use the McLaren out of nowhere and uh, clearly seems to be enjoying it. So, but well done, Q. And, um, okay, I think this is something me and both and Steven need to discuss. How do we pronounce your name? Okay, <laughs> it is, it is Q and Q and okay, yeah, Q it's Q and yeah, like a hard Q, Q and okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, now I know. So, I, I was right when I originally started. Okay, I will give you back your packet of chips that we've been installed. I'm still waiting for that one, so don't worry about that one. I, I, I had yellow one, and then we had um, we had uh, Dylan Hall walk up and say, you don't know how to say the guy's name correctly? You buggers, I do know how to say the name. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, Stephen did ask, I think, two seasons ago how to pronounce the name. And I still and, got uh, it wrong quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I think it's it's a it's not uh, very um, how to put it well known. I suppose it's not a well known uh, name. So uh, there's a lot of nick's name nicknames of this name. So uh, I, it doesn't really bother me that much uh, because I know it's difficult to pronounce the first time or to get used to it. But yeah, I, yeah. I, it, I heard the, the, the first the nickname and I, I, I quite like it. And that's Q. Yeah. Because yeah. you know what you've done tonight? You were the Q to the 007s. You came up with <laughs> gadgets, you were ahead of the pack, and that's how you got your second place right here for round seven of the Race Face Top Pro GT3 Championship for season 17. I mean, absolutely phenomenal stuff. And since you're our last interview for the night, is there anything you would like to say out to all the teams, all the drivers, the spectators watching now and in the future? Um, yeah, well, I just want to say thank you for uh, helping with the commentary side. I think uh, without the commentary, uh, the races would not like uh, spread out much and branch out to a lot of different people. Um, and to the admins of the race phase as well for setting it, uh, setting everything up. And then we can't forget about the drivers that participates into this event and get the car to drive over the finish line. Uh, and then the spectators also uh, uh, cheering on their respective teams that they want to uh, see winning. And yeah, I think I, we can't do much without them. It's honestly amazing stuff. Uh, Mr. Duplessy, thank you so much. Well done to Hybrid Racing. Uh, for anyone out there, and I'm going to put this out to, to everyone out there uh, into the ether. If you feel that you can help out before next week to get a driver onto the circuit, please head over to the raceface.pro Discord and send Duplessy a message Let's see if we can get the driver to the track at Red Bull Ring. I mean, it's sad. I don't like drivers missing it out. Hearing the circumstance, this is my plea out to everyone. Get in touch with the chap. Let's see if we can get him to the track. And let's get him out there. Yeah, that, that's, my, that's my plea to everyone. And I'm going to ask... If we can get yes. you there, if we can get yes. you to the track next week, will you be on the circuit? Uh, 100%. Okay. I will definitely, because it's the last race, and I basically want to see, I haven't really looked at the points, but I want to at least finish at the top five, or at least where the best possible I can end. I definitely want to uh, race at Red Bull Ring. Not only because it for the points, but also I haven't driven. It's a new circuit, so it's uh, going to be exciting. Okay, so there we go. Got a, a bit of a challenge out there to the ether. So if you feel that you can, head over to the raceface.pro Discord. Look for q and uh, part of the hybrid racing. And let's see if we can get that driver out onto the track. But q and thank you so much for joining us right here. Congratulations on the second place. Phenomenal drive on your side. And look forward to, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to say, it. I look forward to seeing you next week. <laughs> thank you. I'll see what I can do to get myself on the grid as well. But yeah, thank you. And I appreciate it a lot. All right. So thank you very much uh, to Q&A. Uh, Cameron, 
a lot of hearts and mouth moments there. A lot of you know getting to see the championships changing ebbs and flows. Uh, a lot of drivers having some positive moments and negative moments, but what an amazing time. Uh, but we've also reached the end of the show, end of round seven. Next week, the final round, and we're heading to the Red Bull Ring. I'm really, really excited to the circuit that I've actually done rather well in terms of iRacing. I'm looking forward to seeing what the ACC drivers can do. Uh, but ultimately, this is going to be a race down to the wire What's your thoughts mm. on it? Oh, I, I believe there's going to be an action-packed uh, race next weekend. I unfortunately, I've never driven Red Bull Ring. Um, I do it in the F1 sim, uh, not not really one that I enjoyed much, but uh, I believe that as all other races, or all, all the other races that I've been doing this entire season, tomorrow or next week is going to be action-packed. Um, we thought that the pro uh, race was pretty much under lock and key for for Kieran Patterson there, but uh, tonight has blown it open uh, completely. So not only is it not a runaway season this year for any of the championship, it is a battle until the end, and not just for the drivers, but also for the champion, for the team's champ. So it is definitely a nail biter and a showdown till the very end. I'm excited to see where this is going to go, Stephen. This is going to be a proper run. And once again, out to you guys from SA Lube. There is a running competition for our spectators. Down in the link during the broadcast of this week, you guys can go and enter to win 300 grand to go and uh, win 300 grand for the week. And also that grand prize coming into play of 2,000 rand at the end of the season. Sponsored by SA Lube. A big shout out to them. And we look forward to seeing what they can do and who's going to win that one. But Cameron, we're at the end of our racing week now and we're going racing on the weekend. We have got some exciting stuff next week all lined up. Going to be a proper, proper race. Anything you'd like to say to our spectators before we sign off and don't you dare take my uh, my saying. It's um, I'm taking it back. I'll copyright strike you <laughs> after what you did to me last week. Uh, uh, we can just sing happy birthday again to Stephen. No, um, I'm joking. No, next uh, next next week is going to be uh, full of action. There we have not just the GT3s on Thursday, but we also have the Formula Fours. Uh, well, the Finale. F4s running on Tuesday. The finale on that one, and it is also a very close race there and um yeah me and you racing this weekend and uh it's it's going to be a week full of action racing uh starting from um uh, from third uh, from tuesday absolutely tremendous stuff so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls thank you so much for joining us this evening and we look forward to seeing you next week tuesday for the final round of the sa lube f4 championship season three and then our final round of the GT3, uh, the Raceface Dot Pro GT3 ch uh, Championship for Season 17 on Thursday. On behalf of Cameron Abastos, big thank you. Our James Hunt of the Sim Racing World. And uh, also from myself, Stephen Koenig. We'll see you next time right here at Raceface Dot Pro. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like, hit that bell notification icon. Let us know what's been your favorite part of tonight's race. And let us know in the comments what was your most exciting time of the race. So there's two questions out to you guys to write down in the comments. Or if you don't have any answers there, just put an emoji. It helps with the algorithm. Helps quite a bit with the algorithm. Uh, YouTube tends to forget about us, so let's give them something to remember. But well done to everyone, and we look forward to seeing you next time. So, like always, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, everybody.